Good morning and welcome to Elkton United Methodist Church for our online worship service. I'm Pastor Eric and it's good to be back with you after our very restful vacation. Uh, I'm feeling back to my normal self again. As many of you know, I was in the hospital before my vacation with rhabdomyolysis and I appreciate all your prayers and your cards and your calls. It's just so nice to be here in the pulpit again and be here with you all. I'm also here, though, with a few friends of mine. We've got Brian Wilmore, who will be playing on the organ, Ed and Cheryl McEwen. Uh, they will be blessing us with their singing this morning. Uh, and Joe Buckley is up in the technology booth, and he is videotaping the service. And last but not least, Bethany Buckley. It's great to have you here, Bethany. Good morning. I'm really happy to be back. I haven't been worship leader since February, and it feels a little odd to do it without anybody here, but I'm really happy that you're back from your vacation and feeling well, and hopefully we'll make through it. Yeah, I think we'll be able to make it through it together today, right? Sounds good. All right. Well, let's turn our hearts to God in prayer as we prepare ourselves for worship this morning. Please pray with me.
would you please join me in the call to worship? We go out into the world. Together, we use our God-given gifts. We serve and we love. United by Christ, we are Christ for the world. Still, our efforts fall flat. But Christ is the head of the church, and he will help us. Amen. Would you please join in the singing of our hymn, Come Christians, Join to Sing. Even in faithfulness to worship, we recognize that there are moments in our lives when we have not been faithful to God, so please join me in the prayer of confession. Loving God, you sustain us with your abiding grace. We have struggled with stress, anxiety, and our faith sometimes wavers. We have sinned against you and against others by our thoughts, words, and deeds. There are times you have called us to be the church, but instead, we have been more concerned with ourselves. There are times when you have called us to share our, your love with our community, but we have lost sight of our mission. We give you praise that in our confession, we are forgiven. Continue your sanctifying work in our hearts that we may be more like Jesus. Enable us as your church to be ministers of the gospel and true disciples. Dearest Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. First John 1 John 1.9 reminds us that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I declare that in your confession, you are forgiven. Amen.
The epistle lesson this morning is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. May God add his blessing to this reading. gospel lesson this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Thanks be to God. So today is the last part of our sermon series on who we are as Christians. So far, we've explored the fact that we are redeemed. We've also uh, heard the truth that we are called and that we are empowered. Today, I'm going to be looking at the truth from the scriptures that we are the church. Now in high school, one of my first summer jobs was working at McDonald's. Well, producing lots of fast food might be a little more complicated than it seems. We had multiple people working in many different positions to be able to get you that Big Mac or filet a fish sandwich quickly and efficiently. And you had the person working on the grill and taking care of the fryers. You had the assembly line workers who put the sandwiches together and wrapped them all up. Uh, you had the people working on the register and others working the drive through someone washing the dishes, of course, and others cleaning the area. You had morning prep teams and closers then who shut everything down once it was time to close. You had management who made sure everything worked seamlessly and that the right staff were in place. Now, personally, I worked on the grill and the assembly line. Um, imagine me uh, preparing your food. Um, but you wouldn't believe how angry someone could get over a mistaken pickle on their sandwich if they requested no pickles. So even though my job may have seemed trivial, to some people it was apparently like life or death. But I really you know, want to tell you that if any one of us did not do our jobs, but the whole thing would fall apart. You know, we'd get behind in the drive through and the lines would get ever longer, and people would get really, really angry. I don't like to compare the church to a fast food restaurant in any, by any stretch of the imagination, but the idea behind it is somewhat similar. You and I, we all have t tasks. We have God-given callings for which we were created. We have roles in the church that if we do not accomplish, God's purposes will not be fulfilled. You see, the church is not a building, but rather it's a people. Christ shared the good news of salvation for all people. He died and we inherited that same mission that he had, and, and we have taken on the responsibility of sharing that good news that Jesus preached. It does not require a building. The church is wherever there are people of a common faith gathered for the purpose of sharing the good news and glorifying God. We get a glimpse of the early church in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. It says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Um, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Isn't that amazing? They met in the temple courts and they fellowshiped in one, of, one another's homes. Uh, they praised God and, and they prayed together. They sold property and possessions to be able to give to anyone in the community who was in need. You know, that's the church, folks. That's who we're called to be. So there is the church that starts with a big C and a church that starts with a little C. 
The big C church is what we call the universal church. We capitalize that church whenever we use it in a sentence. Uh, All people everywhere, past, present, and future, who are in Christ, make up this big C church. Whether we are separated by several miles or 5,000 miles, we are a part of God's universal church in our faith in Jesus Christ. Whether we are separated from those in the heavenly kingdom or not, we are together as the church. We are one in Jesus Christ. Now, the little C church is our local congregations and our communities and our denominations. As as good Methodists, we believe that we are but one imperfect denomination of many different denominations that make up the universal church. This is one reason we do not rebaptize people when they come to us from other denominations. We teach that baptisms from other denominations are godly and good. And so in the New Testament, we see both the big C church and the little C church. The book of Acts and the Apostle Paul speak about the universal church and the unity of all believers and our local community churches. So you see the Greek word, Uh, for church is ekklesia, which means assembly. Um, And it it means both our grand assembly uh, of all the people of the kingdom of God, but also the assembly in our local churches uh, of many different and are many different and imperfect assemblies here on earth. Uh, Another term you may have heard and been confused about is, is found in the Apostles' Creed. One of the lines that we say in the creed is, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. No, it does not have anything to do with Catholicism, the earthly denomination, but rather the term Catholic is simply another word we use for universal. Uh, Now, we all look forward to that glorious day when we'll be together in the kingdom of God, uh, in glory, worshiping together and living in perfect community as the church. However, in the meantime, when we assemble together in our denominations and our local churches, there is still much work to be accomplished. We can accomplish worship and missions and evangelism and witness and compassionate care and justice and service and prayer and study and and even more. And just like how there are many different roles for workers at McDonald's, we need many different people to fill all those different ministries. We need people who can teach and administrate and preach and do finances and lead and vision cast and serve and encourage, etc. You get the picture. But unlike McDonald's, uh, our purpose is much greater. Instead of building burgers, uh, our uniting common purpose is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We do all of that work so that God might be glorified and people might enter into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. We work so that people might be transformed into true disciples. When I think about the role of the local church, I think we're called to bring heaven to earth. In our local churches, we're acting as the little C church to expand the big C church. We're working to expand God's kingdom, the universal church here on earth. And we pray this in the Lord's Prayer every Sunday. We say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we do the good work to which we are called, we change our lives and homes and communities and even the world by our activities. The world around us is changed and things look more as they do in heaven when people follow and serve Jesus Christ. Another way for us to picture who we are as the church is that we are Christ for the world. We are Christ for the world. Now, Christ was perfect. He could preach and teach and heal and work miracles, and he was supremely good at ministry. And people were completely transformed by his earthly ministry. 
And any one of us cannot hold a candle to the ministry of Jesus Christ. We are just not capable. We're, we're fallible. We're sinners. But together, we are better. This is why, as Christians, we must be with other Christians in community. We can't be Christians on our own, by ourselves, because all Christians are called to be a part of the universal church, to be a part of the greater community, and to be a part of even local churches, serving in our communities together. You see, together, Christ says we can accomplish even greater things than he did. That's what he tells the disciples. You're going to go out there, he said, and you're going to do even greater things than I did. And so, together, we can effectively continue the ministry of Jesus Christ. Being empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can do it. But as Paul says in the scriptures, the body is not made up of just one part, but many. One of us might be a foot, an ear, or a nose. And Paul asks the question, where would we be if we're all ears? We wouldn't have any sense of smell. Who would we be if we were just a foot all by ourselves? We would not be able to do much of anything. But because we are a diverse group of people with many different gifts and abilities, we effectively make up the body of Christ as we are working together. And we recognize when we're missing important parts of the body, don't we? When we do not have enough Sunday school teachers, the church suffers. When we do not have enough people for our wonderful committees that are just so exciting, the church suffers. When we do not have people who are going on missions trips or singing in the choir or praying together, the church suffers. All churches, all denominations are imperfect and broken because we're all made up of sinners. But even in our imperfection, with Christ as the head of the body, we can be Christ for the world. Even if we're lacking in some key areas of leadership or in the demographics of our church, with Christ as the head, we can still be Christ for the world. Now, in our church, you might see a little more gray hair than in some other churches, but that's okay. With Christ as the head, we are the church. Now, let me caution you uh, to a common problem that oftentimes exists in churches. The mentality of churches may sometimes be that there is one thing out there that will help grow the church. If only we had more young people in the church. If only we did things this way or, or that way. Well, let me tell you that, yes, it's important to be the best that we can be, but, but Christ is the head of the church. And if we're uh, complete, and in complete and utter service to Jesus Christ, if we surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ, if we make Jesus Christ our Lord, if we completely trust Christ, and if we seek after God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, if we do all that, we will be the church, and the church will be healthy. What will save the church is not another program or another style of worship or a certain number of people of a particular demographic. Uh, rather, it is the spiritual health and well-being of the members of the church. It is a richer life of devotion to God. It is living into our individual callings and our universal calling to go and proclaim the good news of the gospel that will make a healthy church. It's a richer prayer life. It's individually and corporately praying together. You know, we can mask poor inward spiritual health by saying, well, if only we had a contemporary service, if only we had more young people, if only we had more money, if only we had etc., the church would be okay then. But that's not true. Without a healthy spiritual life, without a healthy inward life that's devoted to Christ, no matter what we do, the church will struggle. The problem I see most often is in the church, it runs much deeper than programs and church services and demographics. I think it's always most important to work on our hearts and our souls first. It is most important to be true disciples who are following and serving Christ with complete abandon. It, it is vital that we rely on the Holy Spirit of God to make us capable where we are incapable. If I could ask my congregation to do one thing to help our church be the best church it can be, it would be to seek after God 
every single day. To pray both individually, but also together with other believers. To study the scriptures, both individually and together with other believers. And I know it's so difficult right now in the midst of this pandemic, but find ways to fellowship together through phone calls and Zoom meetings. I know that some of our Sunday school classes and church circles continue to meet via Zoom. But focus most of your energies and even your lives on seeking after Christ. Just as Christ is the head of the church, we must make Christ the head of our lives if we want the church to be healthy. And the good news that we preach as a church, as a church is, we, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we preach. If we are in Christ, we will be raised with Christ into new life. That's the good news that we proclaim. Remember in this difficult season that you are redeemed by Jesus Christ. You are called by God to be a true disciple. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit who is with us and in us. And you are the church. You're a part of the body of believers made up of people past, present, and future who will one day be re reunited together in glory with God. May you be encouraged by who you are and challenged to give your life evermore to Christ. Amen. Please join me in singing, We Are God's People.
As we come to a time of prayer, I do have some names that I need you to add to your prayer list this week. First, Charles Werner is having shoulder replacement surgery this coming Wednesday. We also need to continue to pray for Bob Mitchell, who has coronavirus. He looks to be through the worst of it, but he still has a long way to go. Uh, we need to pray for Henry Jake Jacobs. He had a bad fall, breaking his hip and a brain bleed, and he is now in hospice care. We also need to uh, pray for Nancy and Paul Stark on the death of their daughter, Kim Ernst. And lastly, we need to please pray for Kathy Brindell. Would you please pray with me? Dear Lord, we come before you today as many people with many gifts. We praise you for blessing each one of us with our perfect gift that intertwines with others to make one body of Christ. We pray that you remind us not to doubt our gifts, not to envy others' gifts, but to cherish what you have given us, knowing you specifically chose it for each one of us. We pray for encouragement to use our gifts according to your will, knowing that we form the body of Christ together. Help us to avoid the temptation to bury or hide our gifts, thinking they aren't necessary or important, because we know your plans rely on each one of us. Together, we are showing the world who you are and shining your light among difficult times. In this time of virtual worship, Zoom meetings, and social distancing, our gifts become even more important. Help us to reach out to others so that they don't feel forgotten or unimportant. Strengthen us to become a community of believers who will work to make Jesus known to others amidst this global crisis. Lord, we know that there are many who are facing other distractions, illnesses, and burdens on top of the pandemic. We pray for strength and perseverance for those who feel overwhelmed. We ask for comfort, peace, and grace as we negotiate these difficult days, knowing that you have not forsaken us. Remind us to stand firm in your love, to shout out your name in times of need, and to praise you for your presence in all situations. Lord, we especially lift up our country's leaders as they make decisions among so many competing agendas. May your will for us rise high, and may your voice be heard above all. We ask for all of these things in your Son's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. turn now to our time of announcements, but first I really want to thank you for all of your offerings and your continued support for our church throughout this difficult time. I remind you that you can continue to support our church and continue to give your offerings through our church website at elktonumc.org, or you can click the PayPal link there, 
or by sending them into the church office. Note that this week, the office will be closed Monday and Wednesday. Our secretary, Beth, she'll be on a much needed vacation. Uh, the office will be open on Friday, though, from nine to noon. Uh, Pastor Karen, she continues to organize our outdoor meet and greets with me so that you can have the opportunity to get to know me and I can have the opportunity to get to know you. And these gatherings are being held outdoors at the homes of church members with safe social distancing. And, and typically the gatherings will be from 7 to 8 p.m. and will include beverages. And if you do not receive an invite to one of these events this month, make sure you reach out to Pastor Karen and she'll get you on the schedule. Uh, this past week, I was at Gretchen Ginder's. I was also uh, at Betty Sprague's last night, and I want to thank them for their hospitality and, and just the wonderful time we all had together. Um, and another big announcement, of course, is that barring any orders from the governor, uh, we will be having in-person worship for the first time since the beginning of this pandemic, and it, that will be on Sunday, September the 6th. Now, the service will look and feel a little bit different. Guidelines from the governor and the United Methodist Church, they, they prevent us from being able to do things like sing and have responsive readings. Uh, so be prepared for that and uh, many other restrictions that may be in place when you come on that Sunday. Uh, a more thorough list of restrictions can be found in this past week's Friday email, which is also on Facebook and on the blog site. Also, note that the time the service will be uploaded online will be different as well. We will be recording the service live that Sunday morning, so the service won't be available online until later uh, Sunday evening. I also want to let you know that I've been begun doing some midday, midweek Bible reflections. Every Wednesday at noontime, I'll be live on Facebook talking about a particular passage of the Bible. And you are welcome to join that live session, or if you can't make it at noon, uh, the video from the session will be uploaded to our Facebook page and YouTube page so you can always watch it later. And next week I'm beginning a, a six-part sermon series on countercultural teachings of the Bible. I hope it will provide uh, some practical help for you in this time when we need to be ever more countercultural. Uh, and also, uh, I want to invite you to now sing with me the hymn, The Church's One Foundation.
and now receive the benediction. Go in peace with joy to serve the Lord, knowing that together we are the church with Christ as the head. Amen. Well, Bethany, it looks like we made it through the service together. I made it. I made it. Although I think I still prefer when everyone is here in person, but um, I'm really glad to be a part of the ministry that we can share until we can be together again. Yeah, and unfortunately, I had a few more bloopers than you did today, but, <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, well, until next time, everybody, and I hope you have a wonderful week, and God bless you. to Elkton United Methodist Church for our online worship service. And I appreciate all your prayers and, and your calls and all your, your cards that... that. <laughs> first one, first blooper. <laughs> Wherever we are gathered in your name, there you are. We praise you that you have chosen to be with us today. Amen. Would you please join in the singing of our hymn, Come Christians, Join to Sing. We turn now to our time of announcements. And as you continue to give your offerings, uh, through our, you can continue to do that through our church. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little tongue-tied there. <laughs> um, also note that uh, the time, uh, the service of the... Uh, I messed up again. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> or by sending them into the church office. Uh, note that the office is open on Monday. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> Third time the charm. <laughs> it